vote. I'd rather just get it done. Week nine. But that means next week's week eight. Is it a one period set? Yeah, one period. Yeah, I reckon all of you teachers are going to do it week ten. All right. How are we going? Done? Okay. C six H five ten. Are you done? What are you guys? Aren't you going to be here for a reason to actually practice stuff? Mm -hmm. Um. What state should we have benzoic acid? Solid. You reckon solid? It it oh, it says solid. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair call, fair I'm call. To read the yeah, <laughs> that nearly tricked me too. All right, and then let's balance. So, how many carbons do we have? Seven? I feel like I'm going to be really careful now. Seven? H's? Five? Six? Seventeen. Six, eight, fifteen. Seven point five. Did we have that? Almost. Yeah, got the C from that. Did you? Well, I take back my smile. I was happy. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Mate, it's at 7.5. Yeah. You're yeah. To yeah. Delta H equals neg 3227 kilojoules per mole. Um, what did you guys forget? What did you guys forget if you didn't have that? Like, what do you think the main things that people well, got wrong were? Two in front of it instead of doing 0.5 and then halving the delta H. Because that would be You put two in front of this? No, like instead of doing it as decimals, doing it as full numbers. Oh, then but then you double delta H. Yeah, but... Yeah. Wait, is that wrong? Yeah. No, that's right. So that's worth three marks. Yep. So what's... No, so basically most people didn't look at these or this. <laughs> did you get it right? Yeah, I did. I did the whole number one. Right. And what did you get? Is your delta H? Minus six. Four, five, four. Yep. So you doubled your delta H. As long as you double your delta H, you can do the whole number ones. Um, importantly, yeah. A lot of people forgot this. You'd be surprised at how the state went with this. Let's say 22% got it right. 22%. What did I tell you? Solid or liquid. Yeah, I know. It even says solid in the question. But I did this one. So I'd get it right. Okay. Um, three marks were awarded. So all the reactants and products need to be correct. I mean, how can you stuff up combustion reaction and products? How do you not? I don't get that. The equation correctly balanced and correct sign and magnitude of delta H. There you go. Easy three marks. Fifteen percent don't even know that combustion means plus oxygen, and you get carbon dioxide and water. I love laughing. What do they do? What do they do? Were they here, like, at all? Okay, so, shall we do this? Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, yeah, why must the oxygen be pumped at a high pressure? That is lots of moles per volume. So that all the energy passes through right. the Well, how are we trying to determine delta H? This is what you've got to connect it to. Oh, because of time. No. You need an excess of oxygen. You need an excess of oxygen. Because we're using methyl, is it methyl pump? No. We're using benzoic acid, right? If we're
we're using benzoic acid as our limiting reactor, we have to assume the other one's excess. Because if we don't have an excess of oxygen, then we will get a lower delta H than what it actually is. <laughs> Pressure just means lots of particles in a given... <laughs> Well, let's see what they said. The most common incorrect response was to increase rate of reaction. There you go. Given that the purpose of the reaction was to calibrate, the key requirement is that all of the benzoic acid sealed in the reaction bomb must react. Students must consider the context of the question when framing their responses. Okay? Hence, the 27% of the state getting it right. It is poorly worded, I'm not going to deny it, but we have to live with that, okay? I'm not going to write your exams for you. But think about it. Now you guys know it, know that it's something that they're likely to ask, okay? They want you to know that we use the limiting, yeah, to work out delta H. So I might even put it in the sack to drop, drop so it in. If you get it wrong, if you said like rate of reaction and that, if you like. If you said both and they were both correct... Or is that like contradicting yourself? It's not contradictory. No, I, you'd have to get it right. You'd have to, yeah. Because it's not wrong. Yeah, but it's half or half. Right? No, because how is it wrong? Because I would technically think that might be part of it. You might want to um, increase the rate of reaction because you want this reaction to occur quickly. But then again, combustion always occurs quickly. It doesn't matter how much oxygen you have. Yeah, just try and think combustion always occurs quickly. It's a very, very quick reaction. Okay, calculate the calibration factor. How about we do this one, guys? Calculating the calibration factor. We need an energy. We need a temperature change. Do we have a temperature change? Um, yes. Oh, it's in this part, yeah. Really blurry bit that you probably can't find. This one? Yeah. And a 1.025 gram sample of benzoic acid. So we have this, right? In other words, how are we calibrating it in this case? Using a reaction with a known delta H. Excellent. Using a reaction with a known delta H. So we have a mass of benzoic. 1.025 grams. We've got a, a delta T of 2.17 degrees Celsius. We've got a molar mass of benzoic. Yep. James, talk me through it. How do I work it out? No, but how do I work out the calibration factor? Alright. Huh? Sorry? How do I work out the energy? No, there's no electric heater. Okay, think about it, guys. Close. There's a known reaction. Okay. We have, guys, it says up here, a 1.025 gram sample of benzoic acid was placed in a bomb. It was used to heat up the calorimeter. Can you guys tell me from this reaction, if we've got this mass of benzoic, how many kilojoules we're going to get from one gram of benzoic? It's very easy. Yeah, work out the most times we weigh delta H. Guys, why are we focusing? They, they know what to do. Because you're always talking class. It's Carl, I think. Carl? <laughs> Carl's a ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> Poor yeah. Carl, just sitting there. Um, okay, I would just do it really quick. Do you know what I would do? 1.025 grams of benzoic. 
equals x because 122 grams gives me 3,227 kilojoules. My ratios. They save your life. I've told you before. I have my calculator. But I have... Um, 12.5 kilojoules? Does that sound right? Yeah. Guys, do you know what to do? Do you know? Yeah. Um, are you, like, consciously thinking about the question? Or are you just writing things down? What are you not comprehending? I don't think it's particularly that deep. So basically, we're putting in a massive benzoic, right? We know that one mole of benzoic releases, because what does the delta H tell us? Per mole. And per mole of benzoic, right? Yes, because it's our coefficient is one. In yours, it's two. Wait, what did you get? 12.5. Oh no, 27. Yeah, okay. 27. <laughs> Sorry, 27, 27. Okay, so we know that one mole releases that many kilojoules. We don't have a mole, we only have 1.025 grams. Don't write 12.5, because it's supposed to be 27. I calculated it wrong. Or oh, actually, I read off the wrong part of my sheet. Where does it say in the question that it's 122 grams for that equation? It says the molar mass of benzoic is 122 oh. grams per mole. Yeah, I just can't see it. Okay, if you use logic, guys, just you've got to consciously go with the question a bit more. I feel like you're plugging numbers in, but you're not really conscious about it. How can you do that? How can you like unconsciously answer questions? Okay, you've just got to look at what your equation's telling you. Your equation's telling you that one mole of it releases 3,000 kilojoules, right? We know that one mole weighs 122 grams. So therefore, 122 grams releases 3,000 kilojoules. We don't have 122 grams, we've got 1.025 grams. Does that make sense? So I've simply done a ratio just to cut my time. Which I'd suggest you do because it's a long exam. Okay, now we've got 27 kilojoules. Now we've got to work out the calibration factor. So, what is it? Calibration factor. Energy. Calibration factor doesn't have to be in... So I'm thinking the E equals CF. <laughs> delta T, if you just move that around. E equals... CF delta T, was that the one? Yeah. Yeah, if you just swap that, move that around. Calibration factor yeah. equals energy over <coughs> yeah. delta T. Yep. Okay. Doesn't the energy have to be in joules though? E divided by delta T. Guys, whether you use this or you use a ratio, okay, what's the calibration factor? What's the units? Joules. Joules. Does it matter if it's kilojoules per degree Celsius? No, it doesn't. No, it just has to be energy per degree okay. Celsius. So as long as you've got it in particular energy units per degree Celsius, you're fine. Okay, so I would just do a ratio. I don't like the use of equations that much. But through a ratio, how many degrees Celsius did we raise it by? Okay, so 27 kilojoules raised it by 2.17 degrees Celsius. We want to know per how many degrees Celsius? One X kilojoules per one degree Celsius. Like if you ever, you know, fail, always turn to your ratios. They never let you down. Equals 12.5. Is this it? 12.5 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Okay. That is our calibration factor. Is it to the correct number of sig figs? Yep, three sig figs. 2.17? Yeah. 
So, 12.5. A fair bit. Full marks. Okay, guys, do you get it, Tim? Yeah. James? Yeah. Are you lying to me? No, I'll get it. I'll just... I'll get it. 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 i will you must have improved a lot. In year 11, you forgot like everything that we covered any lessons before. I was like, am I really starting from scratch again? Did you get a haircut, James? Are you just styling it differently? <laughs> this looks styled slightly differently. Oh, this is really important, guys. <laughs> this, is, this is an error. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to ask you about errors. You'd have to be crazy to believe that I'm not going to ask you about errors. So, um, would the value of this calibration factor be higher or lower, or the same, if it had no insulation, if you took off its jacket? Higher. 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 Yes, and just think about it. The amount of energy required to raise its temperature by one degree Celsius would be more because some of the energy is going. Yeah? So higher. Higher because the amount of energy required... One degree Celsius would be more. I most likely will ask you a question like this. You can get really, um, what's it called? Like technical about this. For example, actually I've seen VCAR do this before. They get very tricky. Okay, let's say we've got our calibration factor, we've calculated it. What was it, 12.5? Okay, now let's say that we determine delta H, but before we determine delta H, we remove its insulation. Okay. We want to determine delta H. But first, remove insulation. Do you think it will affect our actual delta H? Not the real life. Actual versus calculated. That's what we've got to talk about. Okay, it's kind of hard to think through the steps, but what do you reckon? Take your time. Calibration factor is higher, yes. It's kind of like easier if you write something down. What do you reckon? <coughs> we remove the insulation, so it increases our calibration factor. That means more energy is required to raise its temperature. But we've calculated it as that. That's what we've got it written down as. Jump to that, so you can't really jump to that step. We haven't got so go step incrementally. So, so the calculated, high, would change, is what you're about. calculated would change. Okay, increase the calibration factor. That means more energy to raise by one degree Celsius, right? Let's say we put in a certain number of moles. We only raise it by one degree Celsius because it needs so much more energy now. But we calculate it as having released less energy. The actual stay the same. 
actual stays the same. Delta H, lower. It's really hard to think about. It's Okay. Everyone, talk to the person next to you. Discuss this. You got it? Can you say it again? Is it about Delta H? It's so... Like, a lot of these things. This is testing our chemistry abilities. It's testing like your left and right. Yeah, logical thinking. I've got... Um, I wrote these sources of error. They're in the PowerPoint. If we begin with a well-insulated calorimeter, then the cali calibration factor is quite low. Okay. Then it becomes less insulated. So when we work out delta H, the calculated temperature change would be less than the actual because some of the heat is escaping. Right? Some of the heat is actually going away. So you, you don't pick it up. You don't pick up the heat that's going away because your calorimeter has become less insulated. Just try and think of it like that. So what we're doing is we're putting a certain number of moles of our reactor and because a lot of the heat is escaping because of our lack of insulation, we're not picking it up with the thermometer, leading to a lower perceived delta H. We don't think it's releasing as many kilojoules as what it actually is. Does that make sense? Because it's going into the environment. It's not actually picked up by your thermometer. Yeah. Okay, do you want another thought one? Like another error? Yeah. Okay, so let's say that we calculate our calibration factor. And then, so let's say that in our um, calorimeter, we've got 200 mils when we calculated our calibration factor. Then when we determine delta H, we add more water. What's our effect on delta H? What did you say? So you need more energy to increase it by one degree. Yes. More so then higher calibration factor, but we've already calculated the lower calibration lower. factor. Again, lower delta H. Same effect as insulation, because now you've actually got more water absorbing some of the heat. Guys, too late to do things like this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I actually corrected B Um What were we up to? Oh, yeah, we spoke about that. Oh, so they said calibration factors higher. No insulation will cause a small attempt change. Okay? Very easy. 48% can tell you this. Think about it. What did we, guys? We said that if it had no insulation, calibration factors higher. Do you guys get that? Because more energy is required to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. Yeah. Okay. Forty-eight percent of the state got that. Just want to say. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Oh, this one's really fun. Do this one. Do you have this on your worksheet? Yeah. This one's a really, like, it's just an all-round fun question. <laughs> Are you making anything? You know anything. I don't know. This, this isn't one line. <laughs> don't speak to Jim like that. Guys, do you just come here like just as a social gathering? I mean, are you going to do some chemistry or I don't understand? Huh? No, I like my whole my whole life's a social gathering. So. <laughs> <laughs> my year elevens also think I have no life. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's all I do. Just mark your. Word. All right, so experiment one. 
Ethanol, can you guys, do you have your own worksheet that you can look off? Okay. Okay, so let's quickly do this. Ethanol, it's used to calibrate a bomb calorimeter. Can you guys see this? Do you have your worksheet? Girls at the back, do you have your worksheet? Do you, Tim? Eleanor? Yeah. Oh, so do it. Come on. Yep. Okay, question. Ethanol is used to calibrate a bomb calorimeter. 2.09 grams of ethanol. Ethanol, not 46. <laughs> okay, dead sim. True, we just did an example exactly like this. Yeah? Which one is that ratio? That smart you? ratio. The smart ratio. Oh. So. We know from, where are we going to get delta H from? It doesn't give it to us in the question, but what's our first point of call? The data book, yes. So you guys have my data book. Didn't you take it? Or did you give it back? Oh. Well, do you have one? What is it? It's negative 1364. It's negative 1364. Okay, so we're literally dropping 2.09 grams of ethanol and we're trying to heat up our calorimeter with it. And we notice through the thermometer that we get a temperature change of 33.2 degrees Celsius. We want to see how many kilojoules is required to raise our calorimeter by 1 degree Celsius. So first we have to work out how much energy is released by 2.09 grams of ethanol. And we can do that through a ratio approach. So to work out energy, um, 2.09 grams equals x kilojoules, 46 grams equals um, 1364 kilojoules. 1364. And that should be, did you guys get 61.97? Yeah, I did. Excellent, kilojoules. And then we have to work out calibration factor. So for per one degree Celsius, 61.97 raises it by 33.2 degrees Celsius. X kilo hang on. Yep, X kilojoules per one degree Celsius. Solve for X and we should get 1.87. Did you guys get that? 1.87. Why? Because when you rearrange all that, it was. Oh, sorry, one over. Oh, I did one over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, isn't a CF value just delta T times energy? No, energy over delta T. Sorry. I reckon even use ratios. Try not to memorise the equations. No, I like, like, it. I like You like the equations? Then you but then you can't it. get them wrong. Because if you get them wrong... <laughs> really? They're like, they're not that bad. Okay, how about B? Guys, B is really fun. What? Stay in store for B. 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 Calculate. Final temperature of the water. What's the initial temperature of the water? 
What does it say? 25.33 Celsius. 25.3? And how much water do we have? 200 grams. And the mass of ethanol? 2.09 grams. We have to calculate the final temperature of the water. To assume, we have to assume, guys, that 60% of the heat from the burning of ethanol transferred to water. How do you do that in a calculation? Okay. Yep. <laughs> you can do it like that. 60% of the mass. Because 40% of it will not be going to the water. Also, you've already worked out the amount of kilojoules that 2.09 grams releases, right? So you can actually do 60% of that. Do you get what I'm saying? You should get the same answer, though, regardless. Link to maths, then? Sorry? Should we link it to maths, then? Link it to maths? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, as in, you only want 60% of the heat, but the heat is technically in the maths. Well, not really. I can do the heat as kilojoules. You'll get the same answer. So you just do 6% of something consistently throughout your equation. You just do it once. So think about it logically. We've got 2.09 grams. Only 60% of that is going to heat the water. The other 40% pretty much doesn't exist. Okay, because it's not going to heat the water, so we don't care about it. That's why Tim was saying you could just work out 60% of that and then work out the kilojoules. Okay, yeah. Or you could just go, I've worked out the kilojoules already. Oh, yeah. Only 60% of that is going to heating up the water. But oh, you get yeah. the same answer. That's Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we'll be employing the formula energy equals mass times Specific heat capacity of water times, um, what is it, equals mc delta t. The mass of water is 200. Specific heat capacity, 4.18. Delta t, we don't know. That's what they want us to find. And energy, this is like, we have two unknowns. We can't possibly have that. We can work out the energy. Okay, so do you guys agree that the energy is 60% of 61.97? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so... Oh, actually, what does the energy have to be in for that equation? What? Joules. So what does it have to be? What do we have to do? Times it by 1,000. So 61.97... Um, times 0.6 to get 60% of it and then times it by a thousand. Let's write out actually, where's my duster? Okay. Okay, so we know that 2.09 grams of ethanol releases 61.97 kilojoules. Only effectively 60% of it used to heat water. So we have to work out 60% of it. 0.6 times 61.97. What's that? point. Excellent. 37.183 kilojoules. That means all of that will be used to heat up water. Now, the specific heat capacity, do you remember what it is for water? And what's... Excellent. Joules per gram per degree Celsius. So it tells us that one gram requires that many joules to raise it by one degree Celsius. 
we're dealing with 200 grams. That's why we're timesing it by the 200. And we want to know the total temperature change. So energy has to be in joules for that reason. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so it should be 37183.8 equals 200 times 4.18 times delta T. Delta T should be um, 44.5. Do we answer the question? Did we answer the question? Why did I get 4.4? Don't you want to know the final temperature of the water so you've got to add that to the initial temperature? Yep, and I don't know why. Did you time it by a thousand to get joules? A hundred? Ah, oh, yeah. That's why you're one decimal place off. Yep. Okay, so we add it to 25.3, 69.8. That's the final temperature. Happy with that? Okay. All right, so at the back, how are you girls with calorimetry as a whole? It's okay? Are you sure? No, you're not going to check. Um, Fun, how are you? Good, good. Okay, so, James, how are you? All right. God, you guys aren't very positive, I've noticed. It's just been an exhausting week, yes. I know, I know. Oh, oh. 27% of the state got that right. This one's really easy. That one's really easy. I want to get to one hard one. That's, that's it, that's all we have. Really? Oh, we have this, we have question eight. That's it. That was this one that I wanted to do. Hang on, hang on. There was this one. How? Okay, you have an option now because I know I'm losing you guys very quickly. This is your option. We either do. Another calorimetry one and a back titration, or we do just the back titration. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, besides Tim, everyone else answer. Do you want to do just the back titration? Do you don't want to do this. Do we do back titration first and then get back onto this? Yeah, alright, let's just have fun with our back titration okay. again. Okay. okay, let's get back into it. So guys, five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you. No problem. See you Monday. See you Monday. Hydroxide with ammonium sulfate. It is hard. It's a hard question. Seriously, if you can write out that equation, I'll be happy. If someone comes to the board, writes out that equation. Besides Jen. No one wants to try? Yeah, there's no aliquot. See you, Tim. Have a good weekend. Hi. You too. Aww. <laughs> I just, I have to be very nice and then sometimes get something nice back. Okay, so how about a equation? An equation. This is actually a really hard reaction to write out. I'm not joking. 
sodium hydroxide and ammonium sulfate. It is acid base. What's the acid? It's the ammonium in it. That's the really important part. Because think about it, that's NH4+. Plus. That's the only one that's going to donate a H. Okay? What else will... Well, you have to get... What do you always have to get when you react an acid with a base? A salt. What will the salt be? Sodium. Yep. Sodium sulfate. Yep. And? Water. Water. Very good. But what's the final product? Um, Ammonia. Did you say? Ammonia. Yes. That's the hard part because, okay, you have to think about it. Ammonium, it's much easier without this sulfate because ammonium we know is a, an acid. It donates a H to um, OH from the base. That becomes water. When it's donated a H, it's ammonia, and we have to always get the production of a salt. So it's a weird reaction, but if you use your general principles, you should be fine. See you guys. Okay. See ya. So this is an equation. Then, well, we make sure it's balanced. So two here, two there. What else do we need? Do we need two H2Os? Is that right? Yeah? Looks good? Okay. So, guys, just quickly calculate. So, calculate the amount of sodium hydroxide. So, what are we actually doing? So sodium hydroxide is reacted with ammonium. So that must be we're adding sodium hydroxide in excess. Okay. So 25 mils of 0.1m. Okay, then the excess sodium hydroxide. So the excess, we haven't even aliquoted. How, it's not too bad. The excess sodium hydroxide was titrated with HCl 0.04m. Yep. And the average titra was, so that's concentration, volume equals 24.36 millilitres. Okay, so what's the steps? Let's just go into calculating the percentage by mass of nitrogen in the fertiliser. Okay, we have to pass that step anyway. So how can we calculate the amount of sodium hydroxide that reacted? And how can I work out how much is left? How, how can I work out how much is in excess? Excellent. So through your moles of HCl. And is it a one-to-one -one ratio with NaOH? Yep. So the moles of HCl equals CV equals 0.04 times 0.02436, 0.000974 mole. So this is the moles of HCl required to react with the excess. So it tells us the moles of NaOH left or in excess equals 0 0.000944. The moles of NaOH initially, how do we work that out? Excellent. 0 0.025 times 0 0.1. 0.0025 and then the moles of NaOH reacted the, 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 
Excellent. So 0.0025 minus 0.000974. Um, 1.53 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. I've just put it into sig figs because when you're answering the question you need to have it in the correct sig figs. And how many sig figs does this have? 24.36. Yes. This, really? Four. Four, yeah. Wait, why two? I don't know, I put this weird thing about sig figs, how I always think they're behind the decimal point. But Just read through the document. So, pretty much, no. Pretty much, um, behind the decimal point is definitely significant, but numbers before the decimal point is also significant. Here so you've got... Oh, yeah. So here, zeros, zeros are non-significant if they're before a number. Okay? Yeah. Um, even if they're after the decimal point, like here, that's non-significant. So that's this is non significant. So why do they even put this them is there? three. Why do they put the decimal? Why do they put zero here? Oh, so before the number, only behind the number. Yeah, three sig figs. So why do they put two anyway? Put two zeros after the four. To make it more significant. That is okay. Let's say we're weighing something out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it reads it to three decimal places. Yeah. If you just write point two. Okay but you know that it actually goes to three decimal places and you're sure about those two other zeros, you write it in because it tells you, like, calculations later are limited by the scales that you've weighted on. So, for example, if, you, if the scale goes to one decimal place and you provide an answer which is 0 0.04, blah, 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 you provide whatever it is in your calculator, how can you be sure of those other values? You can't because it's limited by the scales that you weighed your thing on. So it's all based on errors, significant figures. So the reason you put the extra two zeros here is because you're sure of their position there. Oh. Okay. okay. And yeah. later on, when I provide my answer, I'm sure of this five and this three because of those yeah. two extra zeros there. Sorry, I get it. I get those it. two extra zeros went there? Yeah. Yeah, so with just the other ones, yeah, the zero before the decimal point is just to make it easier to read. That's like... Yeah. So three here, four here. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that many moles of NaOH that's reactive. Now, how can we answer C, the amount of sodium uh, ammonium sulfate? Go back to my original equation. So I've got a mole ratio of 2 to 1. So it should be half the number of moles. So the moles of ammonium... Well, let's write it out. So the moles of the ammonium sulfate equals a half times the moles of NaOH equals a half of 1.53 times 10 to the negative 3. And that equals... Seven point six three times ten to the negative four um, mole, but it's not asking us to find the percentage by mass of ammonium sulfate in the fertilizer. It's asking us to find the percentage by mass of nitrogen in the fertilizer. Okay, so in ammonium sulfate, how many moles of nitrogen do we have? Two. Excellent. It breaks up into two. Oh, that's, just left it the same <laughs> that's why I was going to just go straight to it. I was like, well, we should write it out. So, in other words, the moles of nitrogen by itself equals two times and that the moles of ammonium sulfate. And that will be the same as in the six gram sample because you've only diluted it. Wonderful. Excellent. So, then we times it by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14. 0.0214 grams. Then how do we work out percentage by mass? Divide by the molar mass. Divide by the molar mass. Whole mass. Whole mass. That's a whole Equal. And then times by 100. And we should have gotten 3.56%. Yay. Do you guys remember back titration? Yeah, it's, all, it's coming back to me stronger than... Oh, I love them. Stronger than you initially thought? No, like stronger than I knew. 
Oh, when we were learning back titrations, but now you can do it because yeah. of everything else we've done in between, probably. Yeah, it feels like, like it felt hard at the time, but we've got away hard stuff. Yeah. How are you guys feeling about Ken? Yeah, alright. James? Best response. So, you getting there? Yeah. Just got to do all your polar there, boy. So are you guys. Um, yeah. You remember like word for word everything I've ever said in every reaction process. So that's what you need to do. It's a cut. That's what the lines you need to do. Go on. But do you revise it when you get home? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. If I can be bothered lugging my book home. Yeah, yeah. No, you're really good. Um, so we're good? Next yeah. Friday. Every Friday. Are you doing Wednesday lunchtime as well? Well, I was thinking Wait, just Friday after you? school. Or do you want to do a lunchtime one as well? Um, well, it just says Friday after school on here. It says Friday after school. Yeah. But if we have, like, so for example, for our sack, we might have two. You know, if, you, if we want to have our sack... On uh, in week nine, get over and done with. We might have a lunchtime thing week eight, yeah. or maybe even week nine if we do it on the Thursday. Yeah, we might have it on the Wednesday or something. Thursday, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, have a good weekend, guys. Yeah. What have you got? Thanks. I. What am I doing? Go for the move. Are there any good movies out? Um, I'm going to go see Inner Cleaners tonight. Oh, yeah, I've been wanting to see that too. It's that slump time in the year. It's like now and like around sort of after Easter, there's sort of the shit times. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, but maybe there are some good ones in. Yeah. yeah. I have kind of. Mm. Christmas and the holidays are going to be fantastic. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. Always been Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. What, I, I went to... Story. Yeah, I've heard a couple yeah. surprisingly good reviews for that. Really? Yeah. It's got that guy from wow. Parks and Rec. From, um, what, Ron Swanson? Yeah. Oh, I love him. <laughs> I don't know if I can watch him in anything else, though. He's so 